The NFC West, last year we thought maybe the best division in football. This year, maybe not so much, but maybe the most intriguing division in football. Because, Jeff, start with you. You have a quarterback contract mm -hmm. situation here. No one doubts they'll figure something out eventually, but it might not be figured out by Friday. And just the fact that getting to this game three straight years in a row is so hard. Right. And it takes such a toll on a team. I'll still believe, uh, I'll believe it when I see it in terms of the questions that continue to persist about the Seahawks, especially when we consider that last year in week eight before, I was at the Carolina Panthers-Seahawks game. Before that game, everybody was talking about how the Seahawks were a disaster, that Marshawn Lynch wasn't going to be returning to the team after that year. And then all of a sudden they win that game, they go on a run, and then they're in the Super Bowl again. So uh, I tend to believe it when I see it with the Seahawks. They, they, they seem to just find ways to figure it out. Russell Wilson, in terms of his contract, I think he'll just be more motivated, not distracted at all. And now you've got a guy like Jimmy Graham helping him out on offense. Again, I'm not saying that the Seahawks will definitely get back to the Super Bowl, but I highly doubt that this is a team, based on the fact that they continue to be young on offense and defense, that they will be thwarted by all these distractions. I think that once again, you'll see a team that is in the thick of the postseason by the end of the season. I think the fair question, though, here is who's the biggest challenger? Judy, it used to be the 49ers, and, and I will say used to be because I don't think it is anymore. We called this, at least I did, the best rivalry in football, Niners-Seahawks, for a couple of years. But, I mean, this exodus is, is ridiculous. There are a lot of people that have them, you know, bringing up the rear in this division. I might have them bringing up the rear, Andrew, when I have to make my pick. This, I think, has been the most confounding offseason we've ever seen a team go through. Now, we know about the divorce, the messy divorce with Jim Harbaugh, but let's look at some figures here. Five players retired. Very unusual, including people, of course, like Justin Smith, Patrick Willis, Anthony Davis, the offensive lineman, and then names like Frank Gore, Mike Potty. Michael Crabtree, gone in free agency. So some of those were intentional by the team, intentional decisions. Some of them, not so much. The offensive line is in flux, again, with Ipati's I, 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 excuse me, uh, departure and Anthony Davis's retirement. The offensive line is in flux. There's no Frank Gore. They've got a lot of questions. And, of course, all of this comes back to Colin Kaepernick, who was Harbaugh's hand-picked quarterback. So his patron saint is gone now. He looked like he was regressing last year. I have to say, if I had to pick the order of finish in the NFC West right now, I might put the Niners dead last. Wow. You know who is still there, though, Judy, right? Sourdough Sam is still there. The mascot did not retire. <laughs> we, we can say that with certainty. Sourdough Sam is back as we see Colin Kaepernick, and many believe it's a make-or-break season for him. James Palmer, where do you come in here on the Rams? Because last year, yeah, I think a lot of people had the Rams as kind of that, hey, this is their year kind of pick and then it all fell apart when Sam Bradford got hurt week three of the preseason in Cleveland. Is Nick Foles the guy to take us back to what should have been last year? Yeah, a lot of people believe that the trade with Sam Bradford and Nick Foles is entirely because of Chip Kelly wanting Sam Bradford. But someone close to Jeff Fisher has told me that Jeff Fisher has had his eyes on Nick Foles for some time. And the deal had a lot to do with how much he wanted Foles as his quarterback. And if you look at Foles' qualities, he looks like a Jeff Fisher quarterback, somebody that can manage the team and get the team down the field. If you look at the two compared to one another, Foles is ahead of Bradford in completion percentage, yards per game, and passer rating for the career and the Rams have also with Foles at quarterback want to establish that run game and they made a valiant effort in the draft getting Todd Gurley in the first round and then the next two picks are both tackles so if they th they believe if they can run the ball effectively and have Nick Foles stay healthy and manage this team down the field the way Jeff Fisher likes it they feel like they can be successful on the offensive side of the ball. They drafted five offensive linemen will likely have three new starters center right guard right tackle on the O-line. You know the funny thing is guys we haven't mentioned the Cardinals my Twitter's blowing up. Only 21 regular season wins in each of the, in, uh, in the last two seasons combined. Judy, are, are, is anyone, are we the only people forgetting the Cardinals? Because they could very well. Matter of fact, most people, I think, do believe they are the team to challenge the Seahawks here. They are the team to challenge the Seahawks. It all comes down to can Carson Palmer stay healthy all season. Everything hinges on that. But certainly they have the coaching. We've seen it from Bruce Arians. And they have the roster that can challenge the Seahawks if the Seahawks slip a little, if there's any kind of hangover from the Super Bowl loss. I think they're the team that can get in there uh, and do some damage. I don't think 
people are overlooking them at all. And Jeff, I was watching the... Uh... It's fascinating, by the way. Yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead. A Andrew, the, fa the fact that we, have, we wait till the end to talk about the Cardinals, when considering, what, 10 months ago, that was the team to beat in that division. Uh, I think that they were making a, an incredible run at the beginning of the year. Judy mentioned the fact that Car Carson Palmer's health is really the factor here. But absolutely, that is the team uh, that really will be challenging the Seahawks. And really, you could probably put them right up there. I think the Seahawks, again, will be in the thick of the postseason hunt. But not if the Cardinals have anything to say about it. You could see certainly two teams coming out of that division to vie for those playoffs and potentially uh, a late playoff run. There might not be anybody more important to their team in the NFL than Carson Palmer is to the Cardinals. If you look at the way they were playing, 6-0 and with him as a starter, 5-5 five and five after in games that he's not playing. He had an ACL injury prior in his career. He knows how to come back from it. He had a strong comeback from that ACL injury the following season when he was in Cincinnati. If he can do that again, this team can go a lot farther than they did this past year. And Michael, uh, Michael Floyd passing the torch, it seems like, with getting the amount of targets he's getting from Carson Palmer. It looks like he might be the number one target there, but Larry Fitzgerald also a nice compliment if the switch happens. Yeah, well, we didn't forget him. I, I, I was only kidding. They were on yesterday, the playoff game against the Cardinals on NFL Network, or rather the Panthers. They were leading late in the second half on the road. And plus, Bruce Arians has a great hat. Jeff and Judy and James, thank you.